We're ready to roll? Okay, welcome everyone to another uh, Lessons from the Masters. I'm Mark Hamby and I have with me uh, tonight Arise Collective. We're going to learn more about um, Arise and who they are and what they do. Um, so as we, uh, as we get started, we're going to open in prayer again. And I'm excited about tonight. This one is one of my favorites because of something that already happened here at Lamplighter with this group. So uh, uh, Rich, Mindy, Grace, Josh, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Loud and clear. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. Actually, uh, Rich, um, I just prayed previously before I got started. Why don't you lead us in prayer tonight? Absolutely. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you to boldly approach your throne of gra with grace. Uh, and we say, may your will be done tonight. Father, we long for you to be honored and glorified, your name to be lifted up. May even tonight stir us in our walk with you to grow more uh, in our intimacy with you. We love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we only got 45, 50 minutes. And so we're going to fly through this and I'm going to cut right to the chase. Um, so you're, you guys are going to be the teachers at the guild this year for the stage acting. Approximately, this is a guesstimate, how many do you think you're going to be bringing with you? Question. That's a great question. We're still trying <laughs> to figure that out, but I'm guessing we'll probably have somewhere between 10 and 20 of us at a minimum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then when you were here the last time, you had approximately how many? Oh, we had around 60 to 70 people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then friends came, I think all together with us, it was close to 100 yeah. um, yes. with everybody. We and maxed out the Lamplighter campus, that's for sure. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the greatest things that's ever happened here. I was so excited <laughs> and I can't wait. And so picture what you guys, when, when you guys were here, we had close to 100. With you guys here, plus all of our teachers, plus all of our students, there's probably gonna be close to 150 people here. Yeah. So we're gonna be really maxed out, but it's gonna be, I, I think this could be the guild that could um, call Jesus to come back soon. <laughs> May it be so. <laughs> oh, go. I tell you, I, I think God is going to enjoy what he sees to happen here at the Guild this summer. So what, the folks that are listening, let me tell you what happened here. So Arise Collective, you guys got close to 60 people in your group, you know, and you travel around doing um, this show called Pilgrim, based on Pilgrim's Progress, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Obviously, that's correct, because I saw it. So, so this is my this is my way of introduction so you guys can just before i start asking you guys questions i just want the audience to hear what happened so um rich and grace uh, mindy's uh rich's wife uh, she stayed home watching the kids until the last day she showed up here remember that Gr mindy didn't you show up yeah you showed up at the last day at the guild yep <laughs> josh i think you weren't part of the group at that point um you were still <clears throat> new york city if i remember correctly Galavanti, New York City. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's a that's a, a whole other story that we'll share another time. But um, I remember sitting with uh, Rich and Grace, and then your sister, and uh, it, that was just a glorious time. Was that during the middle of the COVID, the the big one, yeah. twenty twenty yeah. guild? Yep. Yeah, that was that's the guild that was never supposed to take place, and by faith we we did it, and God blessed incredibly. But I remember sitting with you guys and you sharing with me your vision for Pilgrim, okay? Mm -hmm. And did you have it written at that point? Yeah, it was already, we had done a show previously, not to the scale that we have done it now, but it, we had done it before. So, yes. so as you shared the vision with me, I thought, whoa, this is pretty amazing. And my first thought was, it's amazing, but you're biting off way more than you can chew. And, <laughs> I, and, I, and my thought was like, this will take a miracle, you know. That's basically what the way I was thinking. But I'm thinking, but I'm thinking like my son, like, well, everything we do here is a miracle, so why can't they do one too, you know? <laughs> so, so you guys went off, and then Rich, you sent me a, you sent me a text and said something about, you know, should we consider doing something, you know, coming to Lamplighter? I'm like, whoa, do you remember that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and it, it, it just didn't seem like it was going to work. And then you told me there's going to be like 60 people coming you know, actors and musicians and, you know, s sound engineers and lighting and like, this is crazy, you know, and, but, but we just prayed. And I remember talking with my assistant, Sarah, and we we're like, we're going to go for it. So you guys came last November mm -hmm. and we're, we live in this little village of 4,000 people. 
we have this school that has a gymnasium and a theater. And so folks, is, I'm setting the stage for you guys. You got to hear what happened. They came with you, a U-Haul, 26 foot U-Haul. They turned that gym. You guys wouldn't allow me to come in there. They turned this gym and theater into a Broadway, New York, New York City style theater. I mean, it was incredible, you know, from the, you know, the, the smoke coming out of the floor to you, you name it. It, the, it was perfect. You know, I walked in there, the orchestra behind the curtains. And then when you guys came out the first night, by the way, do you guys know how many performances I attended? All, all of them, all right? Four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, what's amazing is that each performance, I got something new out of each one. And I was in tears every single night I was in tears. So, so folks, as they put on this play Pilgrim's Progress, their interpretation of it, it's a musical drama is uh, the first night we had 86 people show up. And I was like, oh, this is not a lot of people. You know, that was Thursday night. Then Friday night, we had 150 people show up and thought, okay, that's pretty good. And then every time we, you, you guys, every day, I remember before the performance, you guys were praying. You mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in prayer each time. And then, uh, and then our team started praying. And I thought, you know, we're gonna get more chairs. We went out to Home Depot, bought, bought I think it was close to um, 100 chairs. And so we, um, we had 250 chairs in the auditorium. And Saturday, 250 people showed up. And then on Sunday, the little matinee that we were going to have at 2 o'clock, 350 people. We bought another 100 chairs. 350 people showed up, maxed out. We didn't have room for anything. In this little town, people were coming repeated times. Mm -hmm. And people got saved. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was the I've been, to, I've been to probably seven Broadway shows. Other than the Lion King, I've told you this before, it was the best. <laughs> it was the best of the Broadway shows I've ever seen. It was just incredible. And so, what, what, and, and you're going to be teaching this summer here at the Lamplighter Guild. Your whole, your team, your main team, and it's it's taking stage acting to another level. And what I loved about it is that the gospel is so incredibly powerful. The forces of darkness and evil. So. Rich, start us off. What gave you the idea? Where did it come from? And how did the coming here to the Lamplighter Guild play a part in that? What, how did this all start? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I grew up in musical theater, loved musical theater. And then, of course, my wife and I, Mindy, we have eight children. Grace is our oldest. Mm -hmm. And they grow up in musical theater. And yet, uh, Every time there was an opportunity for community theater or homeschool theater, Mindy and I would always pray, is this something that we want our family to be involved with? There's only a handful of, even of the family-friendly options out there, only a handful that really we feel confident to, to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And as There was you're... many a time that I got a, no, we don't feel the Lord is giving us peace to be in this production. Um, which looking back on, I'm so grateful for because it cultivated in me um, right. a vision for something higher and greater and um, living with a greater purpose than just entertainment. Um, in the moment, it was hard, but I'm really grateful for growing up with that experience. Grace, when you were, he when you were here, yeah. Grace, when you were here, your face was so lit up at the vision that God had given you guys. I, I knew I knew what you were doing. It was going to happen. This it's, and it's going to happen. I think even greater than what you got. I I know you can imagine it, but I, God. I mean, you just came. You left Lamplighter and you went up to Michigan. Now you you went to Denver, performed there. How did that go in Denver? It was incredible. Yeah, the Lord did yeah. amazing things. Yeah. Yeah, and and really, that's you know, it's amazing to see where it's going to go. But back to your question. One, the thing that we're passionate about as a family, and then we bring Josh and other people into this, we're passionate about the gospel. We're passionate about God's word. And one of the things that we feel like the Lord has given us is the power of the gospel, both, both for salvation to the unbeliever, but also transformation to the believer. Mm -hmm. um, and as we go out, we believe God is calling us to stir up the church and see revival take place not just for unbelievers, but within the church, the body of Christ, as we approach uh, Jesus' return. But that's really where this came from. Our love for musical theater, our love for story, how story is an incredible way to 
communicate truth, just like Jesus did in the parables. We talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. And yet doing it with excellence, we feel yeah. called to redeem the arts, mm -hmm. um, to, to take back that ground that the enemy has tried to, to take that God created. And the specific medium of musical theater for us is an opportunity to communicate truth in a profound way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it has to be done with excellence. If it's not done with excellence, then it could just be cheesy. So yeah, yeah exactly. So you guys, you come here to Lamplighter at the Lamplighter Guild 2020, and you guys get inspired by us. Now you guys come here and perform Pilgrim, and now we're super inspired by you guys. I mean, like <laughs> what you guys did when you came here, we we're like, wow, what we do here is really good. What they just did blew us away. I mean, blew us away. I mean, the acting quality the the um the stunts you know the lighting just the, and then the singing like i was like how in the world do you train people to sing like that right so <laughs> so this year after you guys left this year since you guys have been here has been one of the greatest years of my life praise god mm -hmm. hallelujah music scripture has escalated here a hundredfold wow. sunday nights are my favorite time of the week. We have we have Selah here. We have we have worship time and we sing. We sing testimony, pray. It the very first day it started, it was because I think it's in large part because of you guys. And I missed the Super Bowl this year because I didn't want to miss Selah. Wow. Next crazy. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I think that's a big part of it. Mindy, maybe you can share about our how our families stay together. This is a family thing. And and what we do, like even, even the time we shared worship with them, not on the stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, family is a core component of what we do. And if we couldn't do it as a family, we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And just having a heart to do something that really engages people and that God can touch and use in a way that is beyond entertainment. And, and like Grace said, it's been a very uh, long journey of the Lord giving us discernment because it's the movies people watch, the books they read, mm -hmm. the theater that they uh, go to, the, the songs they listen to that really influence yeah. their hearts and the culture. And mm -hmm. so we're really just passionate as a family and as a ministry to do things that uh, reflect the fear of the Lord and are an outpouring of his truth and his love to others. That's awesome. That is and so I, think, I think, Mark, what you experienced there, what you said, oh, wow, that was incredible and inspiring. It's, it's less about us. It's less about our talent or anything we've done. It's literally because we believe God is answering our prayer and touching and anointing what we're putting our hands to. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we spend about an hour when we want that to increase, but an hour before every performance praying over, we put the, the names up on the LED screen and we pray for all of those that have um, reserved tickets that they will have an encounter with God mm -hmm. and either experience salvation or transformation. And I think that's what you uh, we're able to experience when we're there. It's exciting. Actually, we, we were so inspired. We're doing our own musical drama. Actually, tomorrow night, um, Jacob, yes. Jacob, the wrestler of Jabik. It's, um, I never, never dreamed that we'd be able to do something like this. So thank you guys. Okay, let's get into some nitty gritty. Okay, so you're on the road. That's not easy. But how do you, how, how did you come up with the name Arise Collective? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah about what what was it 2018 20, 20 i think yeah, it was the end the end of 2018 um the lord gave us a word from isaiah 60 verse 1 and it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you uh, which we all immediately memorized um very passionate about memorizing scripture which the students will encounter for sure when when they come yeah. um and so yeah we were just kind of driving home um meditating on this word and we said well arise um i think that could work for our theater name um and then come after we did a show in 2019 and then 2020 hits and all of covid and it feels like the world is blowing up and things are going crazy um and we went and looked back at that chapter and verse two which and, the lord the lord had given us the word isaiah 60 verse one and two mm -hmm. 
but we immediately memorized one. We didn't immediately memorize two. But after COVID, we went back and, and meditated on it and memorized it. And that says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. Yeah. So just taking that and, and taking the charge of arising and letting, letting the Lord display his glory through us as vessels um, and, and seeing the sight and the sound of the gospel be, be portrayed forth on the stage. Well, that's beautiful. And really, that is what, when Jesus taught, you know, he, he's, he's, he's an amazing storyteller, right? He's God, but he mm -hmm. teaches us through stories, but he teaches us through, the other day I was looking at all of the different, you know, animals that he was using in his, just one sermon, and then he's using trees, and he's using figs, and he's using leaves, he, he's using all kinds of things in nature to tell a story, you know, and, 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 and there he is, he's outside, He's using the creation as, as well as words and putting both of them together. It's really, it's the beauty of Psalm 19, you know, where you've got, you know, God through his, you know, the heavens declare his hand at work. And then the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. You know, right. Psalm 19 is the combination of both of those. And that's what you guys do on stage. And I think that's what makes the gospel so, not just, not just powerful, but memorable so that people leave it it doesn't leave them that's that's great preaching you know i mean how many people remember what they heard being preached last sunday you know mm -hmm. but when you when you really can communicate effectively through sound and word and sight sight sound and word together collectively and along with acting and you put all that together that's powerful with the gospel okay so so when you guys were here, you did something really like was so unique. It was after it was after Pilgrim was all over, and then you did these short skits of uh, scripture. T mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me about that, and will you have that at the guild this summer? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're planning um, a lot of our curriculum actually for the guild. I think is going to be um, these scripture performances and basically it's just taking a section of scripture or a theme through scripture um and it's a hundred percent the word of god we don't add in any filler words or anything like that it's a hundred percent the word of god and we put together a it, it can and can vary but probably like a five to seven minute um skit of just scripture and we put some choreography to it um and yeah kind of put it together Music lighting, uh -huh. movement. Whoa. It literally makes God's word just come, come to alive. Life. Oh, that's all. Isn't that, isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Isn't that awesome? It's, it's a really unique opportunity because it takes both being able to use as artists, being able to use the gifts that God has given us um, through acting and singing and, and dance and movement, um, as well as the word of God and kind of combine them together to create this beautiful living and active thing. Okay, so dance. I mean, oh wait, time out. You guys, you guys believe you can dance? Uh -oh. <laughs> well, you're actually going to be our our guest performer. Yeah, you know, I wish actually, actually, if if I could live my life over again, I think I would have loved to have done that. It's mm -hmm. so, Josh. Um, you yeah. you studied ballet, obviously. When I saw you, I did. I I never would have taken you to be a ballet guy, right? <laughs> and, uh, but there you were on stage dancing with these beautiful, intricate, just delicate moves, yet extremely masculinely strong at the same time, that balance between strength and beauty. And you, you, um, you revealed truth through what you were doing. It was, it was so powerful. I, I literally sat there in tears watching it, but mm -hmm. how, are you guys, are you going to be here this summer, Josh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Are you going to be able to teach? I mean, with that, if kids don't have and young adults, I mean, we're going to have all ages here from 16 to 80 year olds. Are people going to be able to learn any of that? You know, I imagine so. I, the good news is anyone can dance and uh, you can dance at any age. I didn't start training until I was 18, believe it or not. I had younger sisters who were taking class. And so I joined in. And here we are a decade later, and, and I do this professionally and did it in New York City. And uh, so anyone can learn. I think within the scope of our curriculum, 
so much of, of the body is, the body's the instrument. So in the same way you would tune a violin to play music and be in tune, uh, I think our bodies are the same way when we're using our voice and when we're expressing. So Grace and I have talked uh, just in terms of, of putting our curriculum together, we will have movement and we will have, whether it's a, a warm up, whether it's some sort of expressive movement, we'd like to put that in there as well. We'd like to incorporate that. Yeah. And our, and our uh, choreographer, Jessica, who you got to meet, she's going to be with us as well. And she, uh, she put together all the choreography and all the movements yeah. in Pilgrim. Oh, which wow. is Okay, so listeners and viewers, this is going to be an amazing, I, the, our Lamplighter Guild has never seen anything like this before. You got to trust me on this one. This is this is beyond anything we've ever done here. You know, usually we have stage acting, you got a teacher. Te this is beyond this. Um, so one of my favorite parts of the show was stunts. And believe it or not, I learned how to do some stunts with the Jacob narrative. Jacob, the wrestler of uh, Jabek, through what you, just watching you guys, mm -hmm. you know? So we're doing some stunts here. We got some fight scenes, you know, God's wrestling Jacob. Mm -hmm. But tell us, tell us a a little bit about how did you guys get even get into that? How did you learn that? And and is that is that an important part of the of, of acting? Absolutely. I think what what you refer to as stunts, we more think of choreography, mm -hmm. uh, choreographed movements to mm -hmm. allow the audience to uh, see something that looks like it's more of a stunt, and yet it's being artistically done with excellence to bring home a point within the story. Yeah, um, yeah we'll definitely bring some of that, but no one so, will get hurt. So. <laughs> just, just so you know though, so as I was watching you guys interpret different scenes with those artistic stunts, creative stunts, it, it, I'd never seen that before. And so here we are doing Jacob and he's wrestling with this man at night. And so when we first started, they were actually wrestling, you know, and it was this, aggressive wrestling and I'm, I'm sitting there watching it and going like I, I don't like this it doesn't doesn't feel good it doesn't feel like it's part of the creative drama right mm -hmm. and I, I, it, I remembered what you guys did and I said now guys we're going to do this we're going to just like have some tension toward each other back and forth in slow motion mm -hmm. you know and we're going to act that out more rhythmically and then it went now we got the music involved and then the singing involved it's unbelievable, you know? So thank you, thank you for that. Okay, so um, as, as you bring your team and your children, correct? The children are coming, right? Mm -hmm. So if the children weren't coming, I would not want you to come. Okay? <laughs> oh, that's great, we wouldn't come. <laughs> They're one of the favorite, my favorite parts of you guys being here, okay? now. Everyone that's watching this tonight, you, you've got to understand this. This is unique. You, who travels with, how many kids you got? Nine kids? Eight. Just eight. eight. Kids. <laughs> another family has eight children. Another yeah. family has five children yeah. and, and, and so on. Yeah. When you guys were here and we had all those people here, and can you, can you imagine 100 Guild students? You guys are bringing, what, 15 to 20. You know, we've got another, one of our other teachers is bringing his six kids, you know, there's going to be kids everywhere, right? <laughs> but, but to watch families be involved in ministry, be exhausted and doing all the things that we do and see how families function within this platform, I think is one of the greatest teaching experiences that people will take home with them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, in Psalm 8, and one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 8 says, from the lips of children in infants, you've ordained praise because of my enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. So we believe just by having the children around, having them um, experience and be a part of worship, it's it's truly warfare, uh, even in the heavenly realms. So, so, so all of you, how do you get? Um, okay, so obviously, what I saw with you guys was extreme amount of excellence. Um, but how did you? get to that level? Were there any times where you just felt like we're never going to get there? I mean, how, obviously God brought this whole team together through prayer. I think that was probably your biggest asset. You know, I don't think we can emphasize that enough, right? 
Yeah, as a matter of fact, the team that we sort of started this chapter with a year ago, um, right at the height of COVID, um, we decided we're going to do this. Eric and Leslie Ludi invited us to Ellerslie in Northern Colorado to their chapel, their small chapel there, right in COVID a year ago. And we went before the Lord and we said, we don't want to hold auditions. Uh, God, we want you to cast this show. You're our, you are our executive director. And he literally led us to pray into, and he gave us the specific person to play every single role. Wow. And when, and this is like 30 people. And when we went and asked them, not a single person said no. And that was taking three weeks off in February last year from work and traveling to Colorado from Michigan and back. And it was a, an audacious thing, I believe, to even pray or think about. And yet God was so faithful. Mm -hmm. What's the hardest thing that you, you guys face? We don't think about it. <laughs> um, no, that's wow. all right. You don't have to answer that. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's just the the tension of balancing everything, family, like shepherding our family, shepherding our team, um, all the logistical things that have to take place, keeping first things first. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe. A, What's first thing? What's the first thing? Uh, intimacy with the Lord mm -hmm. and having yeah. that be, you know, all, all of us having time to cultivate that and then, you know, marriage, family, and then not ministry. Easy. So no, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, okay. So you put ministry last, but in a sense, ministry is your relationship with Christ you know, so if that, yeah, yeah that's, I was reading this morning, Matthew 11, he who loves, you know, mother, father, brother, sister, more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus said, take up, you know, your cross and follow me. Peter had a wife, you know, um, I'm sure some of the disciples had families, you know, they had to follow Christ. You know, Peter had a sick mother-in-law at home and a wife and he's following Christ, you know, and, and I, I, when Jesus gives Peter the the money in the fish's mouth is like, okay, now go pay your taxes. And, you know, he, he does take care of us, but what you're doing right now is you're involved in ministry. And that's not easy to be on the road like you are right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that if you, if you do have time to cultivate, like you said, marriage, children, ministry, but your relation, if your relationship with Christ is growing, then I think one of the, one of the tell, telltale signs of, God being with you and God saying, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to help you through this. I'm going to bless you through this. I think his answers to prayer. I think that's the key. Um, first John chapter two, verse 15, I think it is. And, and you can have this confidence that if you ask anything according to my will, I'll give it to you, you know? And so I think what happens is when we're growing is that God loves to answer our prayers. Um, Amen. so Okay, so what's been the greatest blessing of all the things you've encountered over the last couple of years? What's the greatest blessing? Hmm. I, I would, I mean, for me, I would say lives being transformed by yep. the gospel and God touching, touching people at performances. Like it, it's so amazing to get a testimony and have somebody's lives completely changed and take a whole new trajectory because they were able to see pilgrim and it just totally motivates us to keep going no matter yeah. how hard it is <laughs> yeah the ministry time after the show is by far my yeah. favorite part and what just fuels us to keep going and we have so many testimonies of the lord just being faithful to work in people's hearts and mm -hmm. and i would say even for us as a team as mm -hmm. well my yeah. heart is stirred and convicted during every single show out i've been in the show around 50 times now um and i will still sit backstage and cry and be convicted over lines um wow that's beautiful isn't and it we did, we did 34 live performances last year and we'll do well over 50 this, this year, year. Okay. and it 
it, many people ask, how do you keep going night after night after night? And it's the fruit that comes. It's seeing people's lives change. We are not interested in being a part of entertainment. Yeah. We would have stopped long ago if we were just entertaining. It is people have an encounter with God. And if you haven't seen it, it's hard to yeah. know what that means. Um, but Mark, you had four encounters with God <laughs> night after night um, and other people as well. We did, we were just in Windsor and um, there was a, a young lady, we did 13 shows in Windsor and a young lady went probably to at least half of them. Oh, at least. I'm thinking of a young lady named Lucy who was yeah, probably Lucy. there a dozen, a dozen yeah, times out of the right. 13. She and, was the, so and the last night yeah. she was there talking and praying with our team and weeping after mm -hmm. she'd seen it probably a dozen times. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah. It's it's hard to explain. Again, it's because God is doing something and he's touching it. Yeah. Okay, so July, July 10th through the 15th, you guys are going to be here 10 to 20 on the team. And you're going to be doing, okay, you're going to be teaching stage acting, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teaching people how to act, to, whether they have previous experience or not you're going to teach them voice you can teach them how to sing yes uh sure <laughs> i'm still, I'm still working out the of ins it. and outs yeah. of, of the curriculum but i think i think the biggest thing we'll be focusing on focusing on for sure is is stage. just acting and stage acting and, and there's so much that goes into it that we could i mean we could spend years on it <laughs> forget about the singing part that's not as important as the stage acting okay oh, I would, I would add though, what, what we want to bring, and it's not us, what we believe God wants to bring is that those that are going to be there and are part of this stage acting track that you're, that you're offering, we want them to have an encounter with God. And in that, some acting takes place. Okay. Um, that's our, our heart and our goal. If you have an encounter with God, the God of the universe, you will act like you've never acted before because it would be very true. Yeah. yeah, you're not you're not acting a line anymore. You're acting. We're gonna have to steal that a, one. You're, really? you're acting a relationship. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Did I say something you guys are gonna use now? Don't I think so. We, <laughs> will. We, we may or may not reference you on that. We'll talk later. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it's so true, isn't it? You know. Yes. Yeah. You act out your intimate relationship with the God of the universe because you've been changed by it. Yeah, actually, I just want to quick, yeah. quick touch on this. Um, when we were in Colorado, there was a 75 year old man. Mm -hmm. yep. um, his name was Francisco. And he he came to the show. He was an actor, had done things in, uh, I think, in Hollywood and yeah, California. California, California, very successful in the world's terms. Well, let me just um, background. You guys just met him at a coffee shop. That's part of what we do. We yeah, go. We met him at the show. And then, oh. and then afterwards, he, he went. So. Anyway, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. he, the first, we, we saw him after the show and Josh and I actually went up and started talking to him. First thing he says to us is this was an incredible performance. I'm not a Christian man, but I'm really excited about what you guys are doing. Um, and we just got to talk to him. Um, Josh, I don't know if you can kind of expound on that. And then what he said later on, just kind of give a brief overview on it was a really sweet time, yes. And we connected as an actor to another actor, mm -hmm. which led us into conversation about what are you living for? And uh, a very successful man, like Grace said, in the world's in the world's terms, but he's he's seeking and he's searching. And what he said, he actually came back a week later, which was mm -hmm. so exciting. And I, I said, Francisco, you came back. Why? And he said, I kept looking for basically a, a hole in the armor. I kept looking to see if you really meant what you were saying on stage. Oh, oh. And so while he was praising our, our job as, as actors, he said, I believed what you were telling me. I can tell that you live this. Oh, and there's not, there's not a shadow of, of anything but authenticity there. Yeah. And so that was sort of the mm -hmm. foundation of the groundwork that allowed us to kind of walk in relationship with him. And he said, he, he identified that he was being pursued. His heart was very soft. Do you yeah. have anything to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to say, touching on what you said, is he said, you were so authentic because you weren't acting. And he yeah. recognized that. Okay, um, that's, that's what I want to see happen at the Guild this summer. Okay, you guys, let's just talk about this right now. Forget people are watching us right now, okay? 
out of the thousand people that are watching us right now, I want you to hear this. So I would love to see either one, two, three, four, 10 performances, however you guys want to do this in small groups or large group. Let's do something that is going to be so powerful. I'm going to invite the public in, okay? So that what we do that week, when we do the final night or the final, the final Friday, that it is something where pe we, people can come to know Christ as their Savior. Amen. Okay, let's, can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be so cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we've done this in audio drama. We do this in audio drama every year. Mm -hmm. I never thought of doing it in stage acting. What am I thinking of? Wow, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've done, you know, Esther, and we've done all cool things, but, you know, to really do an interpretive uh, presentation of the gospel, maybe something in real life, you know, we could be throwing out some, let's, let's come up with some ideas right now. What, do you, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking of doing? Well, we're a big fan of allegories. So I think that um, we really would like to incorporate that in the curriculum. And we have a really talented writer on our team that um, I'm hoping we'll be able to come up with some some smaller skits with um, that are small, but have very deep, impactful truth. Yeah. And then they um, tie into the story, maybe the prodigal son, mm -hmm. um, maybe the woman at the well, some things like that, where the word of God is going to go forth and not return empty or void. There's going to be fruit, but we're going to tie in some other allegory with it. Yeah. Okay. You won't believe this. You ready for this? We're ready. Do you know this already? Uh, did you steal this idea from me? Because <laughs> have we talked about this yet? I'm not sure. <laughs> Our writing teacher, um, Dan Schwabauer, yeah. He, yeah, he's teaching. He's teaching on the parables. No the way. Parables, the writing class are doing. They're doing the parables. Okay. Wow, love it. This is incredible. Whoa, and we love Dan. We're actually. He's only. We're in Branson right now, and he's only a few hours away in the Kansas City area. So I think he's going to make it down to see the show. He's an incredible writing teacher yes. and he's working on his doctorate right now okay so okay so you got possibly the prodigal son possibly the woman at the well how about possibly the woman with the issue of blood 12 years that is something yep. that has been we've Troy been talking been. as a team and meditating on for the past several weeks okay. okay you guys listen to this you ready jesus says something to her that he doesn't say to any other woman throughout the entire gospels do you know what he says to her that he doesn't say to anybody else this is so exciting Okay, so, so first of all, Jairus is the ruler of the synagogue, right? Mm -hmm. And his daughter, 12 years old, is dying. Yep. He comes to Jesus in the middle of this throng, which means a violently being shoved around. That's how tight things are. Thousands of people thronging him. And this woman with an issue of blood, who, by the way, She's not allowed to be in public. She's got to be at least six feet away from every person. But she takes the risk of coming into the marketplace because she knows that if she can touch just the hem of his garment, she's going to be healed. So she touches the hem of his garment. The Bible says that virtue comes out of Jesus. She gets healed, okay, after she'd spent all of her savings with the, with the doctors. And uh, do you remember what Jesus does when she's first healed? He says, who touched me? Yeah, that probably yeah, like, the first thing. Yeah, and the disciples are like, are you, are you serious? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. there's that, that, you're being thronged. What do, you, what do you mean? Everyone's touching you. He said, no, no, who, who, and that word touch, the root word goes all the way. If you look at the, the etymology of this word, it means to set on fire. Wow. Isn't that cool? Wow. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's like she, when she touched him, she touched him with burning faith. Okay. Hmm. And then Jairus gets the word that his daughter's dead. Okay. And he is the ruler of the synagogue. He's the one responsible to keep this woman out of the religious circles of Israel because she's unclean. He's the one that's going to keep her out. Okay. So here she's an outcast because of him. She gets healed. His daughter is now unclean. And this woman is now clean. Hmm. And you know what Jesus says to her? This hopefully this blows blows you away like it did me. He says, "Daughter, 
He never says that to anybody else. Mm -hmm. He now calls this woman who's been unclean for 12 years, he calls her his daughter. Wow. And Jairus's daughter is now dead. Mm -hmm. And I believe what Jesus is communicating to her is that you have treated her as an outcast for 12 years. This is my daughter too. Take mm -hmm. care of her now. You know, and now Jesus goes and, you know, takes, you know, heals his daughter as well. But I think he's communicating like the people that we judge so harshly sometimes, he's saying like, she's my daughter, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, I think Jesus is looking right at Jairus. You know, <laughs> this is my daughter too. And so, um, wow. yeah. Love that. Yeah. yeah, cool stuff. Guys, um, this is going to be amazing. I, I'm, I'm, we're going to be praying for you guys. We're really going to lift you up in prayer because I know that you're going to be exhausted. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing this week and tell us, you know, the, how you're in Branson, Missouri, but tell us what happens behind the scenes. I mean, you just come there and hundreds of people show up or do you guys just like sit in your room and just pray or do you got to do stuff too? What, what, what happens while you're there preparing for this show this week? Yeah. Yeah. So we have been here for the past almost two weeks now, right? It's been about a, almost two weeks. Um, and this, this particular run is unique because we're coming into um, a place that we've never been before. Um, we don't have as many connections here and the theater seats 2000 people here in Branson. And so we are coming in, um, we'll be here about four weeks before our show actually starts. Um, and we are going out every day, connecting, networking, reaching out to as many people as we can, homeless shelters, um, you name it, we're talking to the people. And yeah. then um, in a couple, yeah. well, just to add on to that, we literally knew one person in Branson <laughs> getting here and that's it. And so we we're just like, Lord, where do we go? And every day we just like ask him that a couple of our boys just went down the street and just started knocking on doors, like telling people that we're here. We cool. went to four churches on Sunday just to meet people and just trust the Lord that he's going to connect us and he's going to fill the auditorium. And it's been amazing how he has been answering those prayers and just giving us connections and new mm -hmm. friends and people that know people and people that know all sorts of people in the city. It's It's been incredible to see what he's doing. Okay. And in a couple of days, we're going in to completely transform the theater um, like we did year yeah, change. That's right. Uh, we have to put all of our lights, curtains, everything up again. So. One, of, one of the, I just want to add to that. One of the things that we're passionate about is not just proclaiming the gospel from the stage, but living it out and going out to the coffee shops and the stores and the homeless shelters. Uh, Christy took a, a team of our sons to the homeless, a couple of different homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. uh, one lady there said, I think we can get 200 homeless people to your show. But one of our team members, Carrie, he went to a local health food store, was sharing, and, and literally just last week, he was able to pray with, uh, I think, an 18-year-old young lady to receive Jesus on the spot. And that, that's what it's all about. It, it really so. is. It's not, it's, we are not put in positions of, you know, authority and stardom. We're... God's called us to be his hands and his feet and his mouth. And mm -hmm. he's called us to be servants, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what makes this whole thing so unique and great. You know, it, that's what we do here. I mean, we love it. We're going to do this performance. We've already been on the streets last week. Um, a friend of mine, Dave and I, he came, he, he flew up from North Carolina. We had a bunch of our supporters here and, and uh, we had a, uh, um, we had a concert, I believe. I we've had so many things going on here. This is kind of like I can't even keep track of it. Oh, yeah. Michael Card was here. Card, Michael, yeah. <laughs> Michael Card was here for a week teaching biblical theology. And then he did a concert, you know, and uh, we went out into the streets. And so I now those of you that are listening, please don't take this wrong. But um, I like to go to the bars. Now, I'm, not everyone can do that. <laughs> so, so I walked into this bar and here is my old code officer who gave me a really hard time when he was the code officer. And now he's without a job and there he is at the bar. And I looked at him and he was the one person I was looking for. And there he is. And, uh, and I invited him and I'm like, that's what it takes meeting people, praying that God will open new doors. And it's amazing how people come because of that. Like we, we've been going to the Salvation Army 
And this woman there, her name is Rose, and she's, you know, she's got a lot of issues, a lot of mental issues, and she rarely sits down during the, you know, I, I'm speaking, she, she's up walking around, she's talking to people, she's <laughs> distracting, you know. So our kids were there, and they were singing, and uh, they're putting on this performance, and Rose stands up, okay, and you know she's going to cause a commotion. She stands up, and she goes, God is in this place, you know. <laughs> wow. Now, here she is mentally unstable, but she could tell what the spirit of God was doing, you know, and I, and I think she's saved too, which is has some, some issues. Okay. So I want to bring this full circle. Oh, I was going to close it with something that was really unique. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're thinking about that, would love to, if any, we, we are actually going to be performing here in Branson, May 12th through the 27th, yep. 10, yep. 10 live performances. If you're within uh 24 hours drive of branson awesome. uh you you really need to come it it will have a profound impact on your life uh, amen and, and it's folks, free and it's, it's free. free the lord okay. has made it clear we are not to charge for tickets so. okay yeah but you know a workman's worthy of his hire so give 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 as well so so listen guys this is this is huge this is a god moment are you ready for this i'm so excited to share this um, first of all, those that are listening, watching this, if you have not seen Pilgrim, um, if, if I had to drive six hours to see it, six to eight hours to see it, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Okay. So go see it. You know, if you're, you know, if you're in one of those States that's connected to Missouri, go see it. It's worth it. Take your whole family. It's for the whole family. You will not be disappointed guys. This is for you. You ready for this? Ready. So I was just in Branson, Missouri. Ah, oh, when? Just a few weeks ago. Ah. And guess what I was doing while I was down there? I was on one of their main Christian radio stations doing a broadcast. Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm going to call them as soon as we're done here. And I think they're going to have you guys on there to do a radio broadcast. Share about, share about what you're doing. And it will go to millions of people. Praise God. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you're going to love it. And one of the guys, I'm, I'm not going to tell you a lot. Um, it, um, their names are Charlie and Keith, and um, they are a blast. You, are, well, you will have a great time there. So I'm sure they'll have you come, and, uh, and we'll set that up. Any, any last thoughts about what people can expect? Highlights? I mean, we've shared a lot of the intricacies, but this is acting that I believe is Broadway quality. So um, you can see that on the screen there, go to the mastersguild.net slash summer guild. Um, it'll be here in uh, Western New York. We spend one day up at Letchworth State Park, which is the Grand Canyon of the East. See the three waterfalls. Amazing. Beautiful, highly recommend it. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? It oh, will go early, early six o'clock in the morning, have devotions up there. I love that, you know, and um, We'll be doing that. We'll be, uh, we have the 60 acres up there that we're getting all ready right now, the beautiful ponds and waterfalls. We've got Noah Sanders going to be teaching horticulture. Yes. We've got uh, Christina. She's going to be teaching culinary again. That's going to be amazing. Oh, Christina. Christina, oh, Christina is amazing. Her food no. is <laughs> That's right. She was here when you guys were here, wasn't she? Uh, she fed us the whole week. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Oh, and then, then we got Dan Schwalbauer in writing. Um, We've got um, filmmaking. We've got Brett Varvel. It will be here. That's going to be incredible uh, for filmmaking. Um, then we've got um, audio. I forgot who's. Oh, we got Alan Hurley. He's going to be here in sound design. That's always amazing. Uh, Molly's going to come and tell me who's in uh, script or in um, voice acting. Um, boy, who is doing voice acting? I completely forgot. That's all right. And then and then. Um, uh, Noah's going to be bringing his whole family, and he's Noah's going to be teaching. We're going to use some solar panels with, um, um, and then we're also going to use some hydraulic pressure that's without any type of motor, getting the water to move and create electricity. Also, the water running its own waterfall without any electricity, and then that watering the gardens. We're going to be doing that. 
as well as um, learning all the skills of gardening um, along with family gardening. That's going to be really important, especially for the, the time and era that we're in in our world culture with food shortages. And so um, we're going to be learning how to do our own family farms. That's going to be a really important moment here. Um, photography, um, voice acting, we're going to be doing sound design, music, John Campbell is going to be doing that. He's going to be doing that through Zoom. And then, um, oh dear, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting, guys? Art, visual art? Oh, visual arts, yes. An amazing instructor. One of my all-time favorite artists is going to be here. She does museum quality art. art. Mm -hmm. um, she taught here for a week and by popular demand, they wanted her back. And she just was here um, a week ago, taught our students. In one four hour lesson, they produced amazing paintings. I couldn't believe it. Um, um, her name is uh, Deborah, Deborah Hamby, that's her name. And uh, she'll be, uh, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. She, she, you know what's amazing is that We've got all these beautiful paintings in our house. I mean, it looks like a if you have came to our house, it looks like a museum. And um, she she will not let me have one for my office here because she wants me to pay for it. It's like, are you kidding me? I'm not paying for your paintings. So, so well, that's, Workman that's, is worthy of her wages. <laughs> <That's, you know. laughs> yeah. So we got some amazing lineup of teachers. Um, well, I think. You know, one one thing that I would just add at the end here for from our perspective is we're coming very expectant. We're very expectant for the spirit of God to move in a very profound way, at least in the in the stage acting track. Um, but all of them. Yeah, we're, we're very expectant for um, for an encounter with God and then to be able to grow in our art through that. Um, so that's what we're excited for. And, and just the fact that Dan is going to be doing the parables, you guys are thinking of doing the parables and the acting. I, I, it is not. It is. Guys, so I was just informed by my co-host here, Molly Mayo, <laughs> that the theme of the guild is based on a parable. Mm -hmm. Unexpected, mm -hmm. unexpected increase. Yes. Right. Wow. Wow, Molly, that's amazing. I just looked at her and said, no, it's not. <laughs> um, who's this? Who's the this voice? Are you two out of both of them? Nope, there's another one. Can I have some? Hmm. I suppose. We've been, we've been. Uh, Why? Wow. How right. big is it? Our frame is before. What? Our frame is before. There we go. Uh, out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> I love it. It's exciting. So, um, so the, the theme of the guild, and catch this, is unexpected increase. It comes from the parable of Jesus um, saying, um, what, whatever measure you bring, um, it should be measured to you again. So um, he's saying, whatever measure, like a measuring cup, if whatever measuring cup you bring, I'm going to fill that measuring cup, and then I'm going to add more to it. And uh, when Molly and I were studying that, Molly came up with this, this thought, like, that means you determine what size measuring cup you want filled, and God will then fill it. Not only fill it, then he's going to increase it. Um, he's going to make, make it overflow. And so what we want people to do when they come to the guild this summer, and by the way, it doesn't make any difference if you're shy, if you've never done this before. Coming to the guild, um, it helps people to, to experience God in a real sense. That's really what the Guild is all about. Um, it's not about accomplishing something in music or stage acting. It's experiencing God in a way that you know that you could not have done this unless God helped you do it. It's what you guys experience, you know, with, with Pilgrim. And I think, I think the Guild is an incredible place because if everybody goes in with that mindset, it's really encouraging to be around a whole bunch of people that are doing the same thing mm -hmm. that are, that are going saying, Hey, I'm interested in the arts in, um, in theater and voice acting, whatever it is, all these artistic things, but I'm interested in doing them for the glory of God. And when we all are surrounded by people, it's an incredible community that is produced. It really is. You yeah. know, 
you know, devotions first thing in the morning, then a, then a speaker, then our classes, and then eating together too is so amazing, isn't it? You mm -hmm. know, just sharing those stories and praying together. And then, you know, stopping during the middle of the week, we're like, hey, something's wrong here. We can't get this going. And, and then what I love about the guild is that we really get real with like, you know, if we regard iniquity in our heart, God can't hear us. And so we've got to get right. There's no better place. What I love about the guild is like, it's, there's no, um, there's no threat. Like, if you want God to really be real in your life, let's do this. There's no reason to be held back, you know, let's be real with God. He wants to be real with us. Amen. So, and the time is short. The time is short. It is. Uh, for such a time as this. And, and I, I, that's the ex expectation, being expectant, even yeah. coming, that God is going to do something uh, profound at the Guild this year. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, guys. Hey, thank you so much for spending this evening with us. And um, we'll be praying for you guys at Branson, Missouri. The dates again are what? The 12th through the 27th. Of May. Twelve, a couple weeks away. 27th. Um, hey, we should bring the team down there. and. Uh, I agree. Go. There you go. Yeah, a little great. field trip. Maybe that. we can. We'd love it. Have you stay on hey, the floor. Hey, you guys can help us usher and be yeah. volunteers. Oh, that would be amazing. We need it. It's a big space and lots of people are going to be there. <laughs> um, will your son allow me to um, have free potato chips? He's the one. <laughs> yeah, as I long have. as they're organic. Yes. I, bought, I think I bought potato chips every night from him that, that uh, each night that I was there. <laughs> but, um, blessings to you. And um, we're going to see God do great things. Thanks so much. God bless. We are humbled to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. You. Those Good that are watching, go to themastersguild.com slash summer guild, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you this summer. God bless. Awesome. Good. Good night. Good night. Good night.